Welcome to Sustainable Innovation YouTube channel where we are going to learn more on how we, our environment is being affected and what we can do to help us fight climate change. Today we are here at Dunga Wetland and we are going to learn more on the importance of this our wetland and how we can use the same wetland to protect our birds so that these birds can bring good jobs to our youths, our women and hence create our South Africa. Stay tuned and watch more about them. Uh, Name's Tom Boyadera, a freelance naturalist, 60 years old today, but started in the world of nature as a kid, maybe age 14. Uh, been living around the lake for almost the last 50 or two years, so I'm home around this general area. I know it as an IDA. That's an important birding area. Uh, I know it as a place where it used to be called Cobra Country, today gone. Uh, all the nature around here, I'm home with. So, one thing which is so interesting, as somebody who is a naturalist and has been in this space for quite some time, what are the importance of birds in our area, like in this wetland? Are there some indicators that birds can help us know whatever is happening around us so that people can understand why it is really important to protect these wetlands because they are really very important places where birds can live and it can help us also understand whatever is happening in our neighborhood. Mom, as a bird, uh, I got into birding because birds had beautiful colors and the use of a binoculars, which brought it real close, gave you all the colors and the beauty of a bird. But at a later date, and not many years later, like only three years later, I learned that birds were great environmental indicators. And this convinced me more to get into it. Because as environmental indicators, they told us a bit too much. The area we are in, as I have said, has 125 birds that are always here. And every bird will tell you a story. Let me give you a very simple example. When you see a black kite, what the Luo call the Otenga, or what we can also in English call the yellow-billed kite, they call it a kite because it flies in the villages like you would be flying a kite, tiara. But then its intention is black, that's why they call it a black kite. If you see it hovering somewhere, know that there's young chicken. Or there's some meat drying up somewhere or some fish drying up somewhere and they want to steal. If you see a crow, if you see groups of crows somewhere, know that there's something rotting somewhere. These are real great indicators. If you see like weavers, which yes, in Kisumu area alone we have 16 species and people call them Mosogo and think it's just one species. Um, they tell you a lot. You see them nesting somewhere, they're telling you that some crop is getting ready somewhere very fast. Either maize, millet, rice, or neighbor. So those few indicators, before I get into the real thing, are indicators that something is happening somewhere or something is not happening somewhere. If you're going to the lake, for instance, this is the lake city. So it's very important to know about birds of the water. If you see, for instance, pelicans, which were gone for about 15 years from Kisumu because the water was dirty. You see them in their numbers today, they have come in their numbers today because the water has all of a sudden turned clean. This happened a month and two weeks ago when people started noticing. But the pelicans have been seeing them in this open space coming up. If you look at these, these flood lamps in the evening that are all in the city, you'll see pelicans sitting on top of them. 
and they've only come back because the water is clean. So they are indicating to you that the water is clean. I'm not saying clean as in terms of minerals and so on, but they can see under this water. If you see cormorants, for instance, it means there's a lot of fish there. If you see kingfishers, if you see coots, it simply means that there's a lot of fish breeding around that area. And when you hear something that the African fish eagle screeching, you've got to know that the waves are going to build. So they are environmental indicators. It will sense the wind before you sense it. Maybe an hour later, there's waves blowing so high. The fishermen know this and they use it. They know that the African fish eagle has been screaming the whole morning. So it tells them, be careful. The waves are going to be high and don't go to the open lake. And they use it and it works positively. So when you come into birds, they are real great indicators. Think of the fire finches. Think of the magpies. When you see them flying around, you know that there's a lot of grass seed that's getting ready. So birds are real great environmental indicators. And this is the shit says to take care of birds. Going back to the lake shore and talking about papyrus and the reeds in the wetlands. These are very important places that the government has to protect at all costs. It's interesting, the number of species that you find in the papyrus. For instance, when you're talking about Kisumu, we have four endemic species that do bring guests all the way from the Western world to come and see this particular six species. I'm talking about the papyrus gonola, Siwal Martogo. I'm talking about the, the white-winged warbler. I'm talking about the papyrus siren, which is not only an indicator of how much air is in the atmosphere, but also of the oxygen level in the atmosphere. Very important, you remember if you ever read or you ever saw documentaries of people mining, you'd see them take a canary or a siren in a cage with the people into the cage. I mean, into the, uh, into the hole, the cave. And it would be singing. Whenever you had it stop singing, the people would be taken up because this would be a symbol that there's no more oxygen for the oxygen is getting gone. So they're indicators of so many things. If you see, for instance, the heron, the black-headed heron in particular, around a place, you know that there's a lot of reptiles and specifically snakes. That is the Nyamnaha. When you see it somewhere, you know that there's snakes. If you see the woodpecker on a tree, it simply means the camofera ants are plentiful there. So each and every bird. What about the marabu stalk? The marabu stalks will tell you that there's something decaying. There's a lot of dust around that place. They're scavengers. It's not only the marabu stalk, it's the vultures, it's the marabu stalks, and so on. It tells you that there's a lot of waste there that's rotting and stinky. What other birds will not go for? What a crow goes for, let me tell you, a mar uh, what a marubu stock goes for, a crow will not go for that. Because it's stinking and the crow can get the stink and they don't like it. So that's how we relate birds to the environment. And it's important to know that the one you're hearing singing, which is known as the yellow rump, that is the measure. That bird is the measure. If you talk about a bird big, a big bird, it must be bigger than that yellow vented bulbul. It's got yellow at the vent, so they call it yellow vented bulbul. 
or common bulbul. So any bird smaller than that bird is a small bird. Any bird bigger than that is a big bird. World over. And remember we have different species of birds and birds feed on different things. Some feed on nectar, some on insects, some on crop, some on leaves, some on seeds. So they feed on everything, including fish, reptiles, and name it. And uh, I think that is it, unless you have another question. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you learned that in, in Dunga wetland only, we have over 125 species of birds. And the place is demarcated as one of the important bird areas in the region. And I hope you are continuing to learn more. Please like, share, and don't forget to subscribe. We can't wait to change this area so that our lives can also change. Thank you.